I will give you the mic. We'll take a seat right here. Thank you. Hi, Thank you so everyone. Much. Welcome to Vancouver. I love Vancouver. I miss Vancouver. I used to work in Vancouver. Yeah, you did some time here. St Stargate Universe, you were here a lot? I was. I was here for uh, two years. Yeah. In Stargate Universe. How's everyone doing? Yeah. What an amazing crowd. It's so fun to like have a crowd of people again. Oh yeah, it's eclectic. It's awesome. I don't know where to start. Should we start with Joy Luck Club? <laughs> yes, let's do that. But you know what? Uh, it speaks to your history. I mean, uh, the experience you, you've garnered during your time on the big screen and the small screen. It's incredible. Also, the voice of Mulan. Yeah. It up. You are officially a Disney legend now, like by designation. Yeah, that's pretty uh, crazy that um, that was bestowed upon me because, I don't know, just sometimes when things like that happen in your life, you, you feel like it's not real and and it's an out-of-body experience and, and that's basically been sort of my experience the past two three years with star wars and the mandalorian it's, it's funny like uh jean carlo esposito was here a few years ago uh who of course plays moff gideon moff gideon he had a similar out-of-body experience just being caught yeah. up in this star wars storm and you see the people out here i mean star wars seems to have like a, a special captivation with people especially at fan expo so we thank you for that oh thank you oh, actually you know what I, my husband, who's actually here today, um, he had gotten me at least 20 or 30 t-shirts of the Book of Boba Fett and Fennec Shan because um, he was so excited for me because he knows what a huge Star Wars fan I've been and this had been an absolute dream come true for me. Um, and he's not a geek at all. So he's just extremely supportive. So I want I wanted to wear this over myself. I'm gonna ask for a vote here, okay? And see which one. I have a feeling you're gonna because I only brought three of the like twenty or thirty. Hold on. Do you want me to hold them up? Oh, I'll do it. Okay. So this this one is just Fennec, all right? It's pretty cool. It's like all different aspects of it, right? And it's um it's um. I think Doug Chang helped to do this one. Oh yeah. Um, okay, then this, this, this one is, of course, got the title. Kind of comic book style. Got the boba. Okay, and that's number two, and it's got Fennec in there. And then this one is more classy, of just boba and Fennec in pencil drawing. Very the cool. So which one should I wear? One. <laughs> two. It's a toss up between two and three. Yeah. Two or three? Two? Yeah. Or three? Yeah. That's a two. I will give him two. Outstanding. Yeah. Good. Nice, nice merch there. Okay. Uh, we're so thrilled to have you here. And uh, is it true that you're actually going to be getting your star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame later this year? Yeah. Let's hear it. I mean, that's pretty huge. Yeah, I, I don't, um, I don't know what's going on, really. So, um, you know, it, it's the only great thing about all this cool stuff that's happening is it, it's some stuff that I've manifested in my life as far as dreaming about wanting to be in a Star Wars project, right? Dreaming about becoming an actor and having a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. So. <laughs> Unreal. The journey, though, is incredible. And and being, you know, first being um, an, an Asian woman, those were two strikes against me. But I'm in Vancouver. I'm I'm with like my Star Wars nerds and my Asians. You're in the same space. <laughs> but then on top of all that, um, you know, there's ageism too, right? Because I'm no spring chicken. <laughs> But the great thing is, if I'm if I'm an example of what can happen, if I can inspire you guys to go after your dreams, especially the young ones that I've been meeting today, I've met a couple of freshmen of high school. The younglings. Um, the the youngins, yes. Um, I'm I get so excited when I meet new Star Wars fans because it brings back memories of me being a teenager loving Star Wars. Um, and, and it's manifesting your own destiny, right? It's it's fulfilling your own potential. So um, I'm I'm all about that. If I if I can if I can inspire that it can happen because it happened to this weird 
girl nerd here, it can happen to you. She's living the dream. Uh, okay, I want. I don't want to ask what your favorite Star Wars film is, but I do want to ask you, because I know you're an expert, what is your favorite sequence or scene in any of the Star Wars movies? Because everyone's got like a favorite moment or like an action scene or just like an interplay of dialogue. Uh, what do you, what, what do you go to in terms of your, your favorite Star Wars moment? Wow. Like you can choose any of them, like prequels, you know, it's like the originals. Um... I think I'd go back to the one where in the original movie, that's now number four, um, yeah. A New Hope. A New Hope. When Luke is looking at the binary sunset. Yeah. Right? And the John Williams score swells. And his Luke Skywalker theme by John Williams yeah. swells up. And, and it's all about um, this farm boy feeling like he he's never going to be able to do what he wanted his dreams were going to be squashed and what would become of you know his life um it's i don't know that moment and i think for many of us it, it resonates where it, it's about um hoping and wishing for something and feeling like you're defeated and then suddenly you become the hero, you know? So, yeah. yeah. So that moment is very special. That echoes me. your own story a little bit, I think. A little bit, yeah. yeah. A little bit. Uh, Tamora Morrison is an absolute force. Oh my gosh. I mean, I've loved that guy since Once Were Warriors. Oh, yeah. Time, so, time is the bomb. But I love, there. there's a balance that you bring to his character. I don't know. If, I don't know if anyone's everyone's caught up completely. I, I think they have, but I will avoid spoilers. But there's a key scene in the later season, later in the season for the Book of Boba Fett, where uh, uh, Boba has a confrontation with like another classic villain, and Fett comes out and kind of talks him down a little bit, or, or uh, gives him some reason. So talk to me about what you bring to the character of Boba Fett and how you two kind of strike that balance in that world. All right, first of all, how crazy that I'm working with Boba Fett, right? <laughs> yeah. How crazy that Boba Fett's still alive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, he's very much, right? Yeah. Um, and Tem is, I I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a little secret. When I first met Tem, I was petrified. One, because, you know, he's Boba Fett. And two, because he was acting so serious. You know, Tim could put on this really serious persona. And he did it on purpose because he wanted to intimidate me. And then later, like little by little, you just, once you, the man is all heart. And I think that's what he brings to the character. You know, he brings so much um, empathy and and, and, and and he grounds that character so much. He makes him more human and I, I, I just adore him. It's fascinating because Boba in the original movies was never developed. He had like a couple of lines of dialogue and now I think I don't want to say that they softened his image, but I think a lot of people are surprised and, and delighted at where they are taking his character uh, and, and the importance of community and, and the kind of family that he's building. So I think that's a great part of the show. We're, let's get some questions from people. So in an orderly fashion, if you can, we can just line up uh, to one of the two mics there. Keep your masks on if you can. And because we do have the masks on, let's make sure we're really uh, crowding the mic and uh, really projecting our voice. Before we get to questions and as everyone lines up, I want to talk about your costume. Because it has, it commands such. You just look so badass in it. Like, does that help kind of conjure up the characters' characteristics, for lack of a better word, when you're in costume? Because it just looks so cool. Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, I think the the most amazing part about creating a character is having all the departments, from the hair department to the makeup to um, you know wardrobe, you know, to take what's written on the page and make it come to life. And with Fennec, um, once I saw the costume, because I think Doug Chang and um, a, a, a lot of the designer, John Favreau, they, and, and of course Dave, Dave Filoni. Who does not love Dave Filoni? <laughs> <laughs> Biggest nerd in the world. Um, the, the costume, uh, first of all, the orange color was so significant for me. And, and the fact that her name was Fennec, and it's Fennec, 
foxes that comes to mind and fennec foxes have that orange coloring in their fur and i think they're a desert fox aren't they yeah and just all those elements and and that's when it inspired me to want to do something really cool with her hair because um my uh, maria uh, sandoval who's an amazing hair person you know i came up with this idea of like having these ears in the braids and she somehow made it happen and and then it became you know and then the, the, the braid was the tail and it became this character you know and that she felt like she was the assassin because an assassin should not have flowing hair you know like blowing in the wind right especially with the helmet it's gonna get caught on something it's gonna get caught and uh, you know it just became such a treat to create that character all because of the name the costume and and the silhouette of her costume it's very very noticeable i just love that because fennec you know there's like a name and a concept image but then you just fill it and, and bring it to life and i just think that's incredible oh, thank you all um, right question time we'll start on this side go ahead hello hi oh my gosh okay so for i know your recent work with uh is boba fett right we're twinsies but mine's about bubble tea <laughs> i um for me, as a millennial, you're, you're iconic to me because Bob Mulan is quote unquote the badass Disney princess. Yeah. So this is personally why I'm here and you know, my question to you is that you know, diversity and inclusion is very important, especially for young women of color, obviously. So what is your advice to them and to others of like, you know, who look like us you know, to, to go in this industry and to like, have more representation on film. Yeah, I mean, I grew up in white suburbia. You know, after coming from, like, I, I was raised in Hong Kong, but I was really, really young, and so most of my formidable years was um, in, uh, in Pittsburgh. And I think there were many, many times when I felt, as an Asian American, that I felt like I was not part of the larger group, that I was not part of, you know, my community in, in many ways. And so I did a lot to try to like push away from my culture and push away from my identity. I wanted to like anglicize my name. Not that there's anything wrong with anglicizing your name. Your, you know, your name is your name and you have to uh, love it and, and, and identify with it. But I had a very strange name, Ming-Na Wen. And, um, it, it, but it just never felt right. So it's taken me this long, decades later, to recognize that you need to love who you are, embrace what you can offer, and hell, being Asian, I mean, we got good skin. <laughs> we, we stay young looking for a really long time, and that's really great. But I think the more you understand who you are and what you can offer and what you can bring to the table and the more confidence you have about that the more it becomes universal and and people will feel that confidence and make them respect and accept you as you are and that's all we all want right all these stories all these fantasy figures that we love to cosplay with, so many of them are always just about searching their self-worth and, and their identity. And that's that's what I would say, is just love who you are, because you're perfect. There you go, beautiful. Thank you so much for that question. I will say we're not going to get to everyone's questions, and that's partly my fault because I spent the whole first 50 minutes blabbing. I'm sorry, truly, but we'll get to as many as we can, and we'll go on this side now. Go and ahead. I'll keep my answer short. Okay, go. <laughs> uh, first, to echo a bit of all that uh, representation matters. I know it talks about how when I was growing up, you were probably the first person I saw is that looked like me in the media that I consumed. So I'm just wondering for you, who was that for you growing up? Did you see yourself in anyone in particular when you were growing up? Um, I saw myself in, um, in, in certain characters, but for me, I think Asian characters were hard to come by. I mean, we had the Bruce Lee's, uh, you know, representations with martial arts, and, and I embrace that now, too. You know, that's our art form, damn it, and, and, and we should be proud of it. 
because it's a beautiful art form for, for everything that it offers philosophically um, as well as physically. But I, I mean, I love Sigourney Weaver, I love, uh, you know, strong women, but I just always look to my mom. My mom was my, my idol, so. Nice one. Yes, go ahead over here. Hi, Mingna. Hi. Uh, my name's Cody. Hi, Cody. And first off, I want to say you're a badass. So thank you for being for that. Can you say it louder for my husband? <laughs> Your wife's a badass. <laughs> um, you know, just agreeing with Thor with that too. So. Uh, <laughs> um, so you've been. I guess you have a great um, relationship with Disney being in a few of their projects, shows, and movies. It paid for my house. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's a lovely place. Um, so I know DC is kind of the rivalry, or sorry, the rival of Marvel and Disney, of course. Um, is there a character you would love to play or like to play for um, either you know the DCEU or animated or any uh, I mean, other I, projects? I mean, I have crossed over to DC. I was in one of the Batman series. Uh, I think it was just called Bill Batman, and I played Detective uh, Yin uh, in it. Uh, this was a few years back, so I have crossed over. But um, heck, you know, if DC calls me up. I'm, I'm more than happy to put on a DC cab. I, I don't think uh, the rivalry the rivalry is just within that, those worlds. You know, for me as an actor, it's just all about creating a great character or, or have, like, having fun. So um, I think all those worlds are very valid and wonderful and they offer incredible escapism for all of us. So yeah, DC, call me. You got our number. Here. Go ahead on this side. Yeah. So, um, what was it like filming in the volume as opposed to you know green screen or physical sets? Physical what? Physical sets or green screen? Yeah, but like filming in the volume like they did. Did you hear what I heard? No, I didn't. But your mind is clearly in the gutter. <laughs> physical sets. Sets. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> You guys well, know, right? There's a lot of um, technologically innovative things happening with the visual effects on yes. the, those productions. Well, if you've ever been to Disneyland, Disney World, or any amusement parks where you're immersed in, you know, the, the massive picture, like what is that one soaring? Soaring? Oh, like the wings over something like something. that. Yeah. I can't remember, but it's like that. But a million times more vivid because it, the, the images are so saturated and so digitally enhanced that when you're in it you are you are in that world and it's incredible it's it really helps an actor not to just have green screen and you have to use your imagination you know when Boba Fett and I were um, uh, trying to get his uh, ship back when we were in that volume we were looking at his ship and it was it looked massive you know so you can't help but react to it and when it was taking off and they were blowing that beyonce fan wind at me you know it's like you just react because it's like it's this it's a ship whatever the name of it is now these days i don't know <laughs> starfire right. it's just boba's ship that's right we'll yeah. leave it at that boba's ship thank you so much and we'll take one over here hi good afternoon miss melinda may Oh, hello. Yeah. Uh, my name is Reggie and I'd like to start up by saying it's my greatest honor to see you in person today and to actually ask you a question because back in the Philippines I was only watching you in movies like Mulan and Joy Luck Club and recently it's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. which I really really love that I've started subscribing to Disney Premium. <laughs> 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 and my wife even says that when she sees you with that Melinda May look, you have a really, really good projection on the TV screen. <laughs> yes, I, I love that act. So, thank you so much for giving us Melinda May. Now my question is, through all these you portrayed very great characters, and which one would do you really love, 
and you will be willing to do over and over again. Well, this body holds out, you know. <laughs> um, I, I would love to, I, I miss being, you know, the cavalry. I miss being Agent May. So, yeah, that, that would be amazing um, to reprise that role. And, um, I mean, that's why I loved, like, even when I did that cameo for the live-action Mulan. You know, it was just, it was just such a touchstone moment to pass the baton and, and to be part of it. Um, because, uh, you know, I have so much history with all those characters. I spent seven, eight years being Melinda May, you know, so, um, all of them. But, like, right now, my baby is Fennec Shand. I absolutely love, love being Fennec Shan. Yeah. And just uh, one last thing. Uh, can you make me an honorary Agent of the Shield agent by asking the iconic line, for example, Agent Reggie, are you willing to comply? Can you just do that for me, ma'am? <laughs> this is my chance. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, okay. Thank you so much, Miss Ming. Now it's worth a try. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, go ahead on this side. In the book of Boba Fett and the Mandalorian, uh, is the Grogu uh, puppet as cute as it looks? Cuter. It is so hard to work with him on set. Number one, he's an absolute diva. All right? I'm, I'm telling you. Hardest person, character to work with. No. He does have an entourage, though. He really does. He's got like four puppeteers, as well as uh, a slew of um, uh, other uh, parts of him that, that works together, and it's incredible. They're so talented. But Grogu is, once he starts moving, he is alive. And it's amazing. I mean, it's very hard to keep that Fennec Shan face when he's on set because all I just want to do is just pinch his cheeks. Thanks so much. I think it was so important to have a physical, you know, like physical uh, uh, character ver versus like a digital creation for, for, for someone like Grogu who has to, you know, conjure up a lot of emotion and things like that. It has to take up a physical presence on, in camera to really make it work. That's so true. I, I mean, as good as CGI is, it, it does somehow lack the the human element which yeah, you know tangible. all the puppeteers and all of them yeah. like they really bring to that character i mean that and in a way i mean not to say anything bad about because i love all the pixar movies and uh, you know i cry at all of them and but um you know there's something beautiful about the 2d animation and um uh, mulan you know kind of incorporated definitely the 2d plus the new CGI that was coming out. At yeah, that that's time. right. That was a big turning point in uh, animation. So, you know, it was, it was tough. But Raul Julia was a gem of a human being, and uh, he was already, you know, not well at that time, but he really wanted to do this character and do this movie because his kids loved Street Fighter so much. So um, I, I loved, you know, every minute of it. I loved. Um, filming it, I, I I had a lot of fun training and uh, and hanging out with the guys and with uh, Kylie Minogue who um, played Cami, and uh, it was it, I have very fond memories of it. Yeah, Raul Julia was he was uh, amazing, very inspirational. Yeah, he was a legend. Yeah, yeah, and it's kind of nice to be in a scene with that iconic moment. It's really cool. <laughs> Awesome, thank you very much. And that was all pre-social media and memes, too. That's right. <laughs> all right, go ahead over here. Uh, hi, I'm Madeline. Um, I love Fennec, and I want to see more of Fennec. Thanks. And I was just curious. How much more? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's my minuendos, okay? <laughs> uh, if Fennec were such to a have nerd. Her own I'm show. such a nerd. Go ahead, I'm um, sorry, Matt. Uh, if Fennec were to have her own show, what would you want to see as the main plot for season one? Wow. Uh, <laughs> you're asking the wrong person. Um, and she does deserve her own show. Aw. Serious? You guys really like Fennec that much? Come on, folks. Come on. 
I love you guys. Thank you. Um, I, you know, I, I have a lot of thoughts about where her character can go. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to ask uh, John and Dave and maybe uh, see where it goes. But right now, I'm just beyond thrilled to just be with Boba in the book of Boba Fett. You know, it's it's so much fun, and I love I love having that sort of ensemble work. You know, it's not always great to be number one. You're there every day. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks though. for the question. Thank you. Yes, go ahead over here. Uh, hi. Hi. Hey, thanks for coming to Vancouver. Yeah, we. I remember watching the first time, the first time I saw you and Bob was Mulan back in 1998. And I also enjoyed your performance in The Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett. Yeah, I was quite surprised when you were going to be in The Mandalorian. So just. This is a little fun question. Um, since you're a big Star Wars geek, uh, do you have a favorite Star Wars meme? Oh. Favorite meme? From Star Wars. From Star Wars. There's so many. I know. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite Star Wars meme? <laughs> the Senate meme. <laughs> what was that? I am the Senate. <laughs> I am the Senate. Ah. Huh. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I hate like trying to answer a question like that. So um, I'm not going to then. <laughs> Maybe we'll give you like a like a couple examples next time you pick your favorite. Like the shirts. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you so much. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. Oh, jeez. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry. you can just call you me. You can good. just call me me. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's more. I'm, I'm, I'm mildly freaking out right now, but I'm fine. Oh, uh, that's I, so sweet. I have been a fan of yours since Mulan, and I've loved everything that you've ever been in. Anytime I ever see you are involved in a project, I'm immediately into it, and I love it. Oh, okay. Well, next this week, I'm gonna plug it. This week. Young Sheldon. I don't know if it's the same oh, guy, yeah. but I do an episode of Young Sheldon, so I just right on. Okay. That's awesome. Okay, so uh, I had to write this down because I'm terrible with the new things up. Okay, uh, the movie Mulan has widely, at least within the queer community, been accepted as a queer-centric film. While it may not have been written that way on purpose, the movie has definitely helped many queer folks see themselves more clearly, whether that be through Mulan's drag, Shang being considered a bisexual character and subsequent icon, awesome. as, well as, awesome. as well as the song Reflection being co-opted by trans people everywhere as a way to explain the trans experience. So my question for you is, how do you feel about the film being such an iconic and special film to queer people everywhere, and thus Mulan herself as a queer icon? Wow! Thank I love so it. Much. I love it. I love the question. I love the fact that I was able to be part of a character that had that as a residual but also now poignant impact in the queer community. Because, you know, that definitely I don't think was um, in, in the or maybe it was and I didn't have any idea because I knew the story of Mulan growing up and it's about her dressing up as a man to, to save her family and, and be, be, be a, a, a heroine. Um, uh, it's wonderful because anytime there's a character that can help to um, make someone feel like they're seen and that they're represented is just, I mean, it's an icing on top of a layer of icing. So I love the fact that um, that happened and it's, you know, it's a testament to um, what a, a personal story, like the story of Fa Mulan, can have on a very universal level. You know, a, a very specific Chinese folklore became something that man, woman, trans, queer are all able to see a little of themselves in it. 
And it's all about, you know, Mulan trying to find who she is and what she's capable of and what her potential is and only feeling like she was disappointing and failing. And in the end, because she just followed her own heart and believed what was right, that's the, you know, her reward was saving China, right? Her reward was becoming the heroine or the hero. It doesn't matter. It's just about finding your potential. So. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. You. Well said. Thoughtful group here. Really thoughtful group here, you know? They, it really is. Yeah. That's amazing. All right, go ahead over here. Hello. Um, welcome to Canada, and, uh, you know, really great to have you here, but... Um, well, that didn't sound very enthusiastic. <laughs> what are you so saying? Uh, they're like... Welcome to Canada, and uh, you know, we're really thrilled to have you here. He's nervous. <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, I'm uh, so bad. I just wanted to ask a quick question. Just, you know, you've been part of so many big fan bases, and it's just been so great to see you play different strong roles in all these, um, like, categories that we've seen in movies and TV shows. Has there been a fan base that you haven't touched on yet that you just love to be part of? And, you know, that could be, like... Harry Potter, or The Lord of the Rings, or DC, like, is there something that you've just always been like, oh, if I had the opportunity, I'd take it? I don't want to be greedy. <laughs> but, but be greedy, right? Um, I do, I, I can't say some of the projects that I, I'm working with, but, I mean, I, I feel like, um, Wow. I mean, some people have mentioned Star Trek, and I've always been a Trekker, and I know Bill is here somewhere in the building. He's coming up after you, actually. Oh, well, there we go. Stick around. So maybe I should just hang out with him. But, um, <laughs> you know, that would be a really incredible um, franchise to touch on. And what else can I touch? That's good, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I'm just grateful for anything, anything that comes along, and um, and and uh, you know, I just uh, I hope I get to keep working. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for wanting to keep watching it. Okay, go ahead over here. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm a huge fan of Agents of Shield, and my question for you is. What was your most memorable behind the scenes moment with the Agents of Shield cast? The the bookends. You know, the first the pilot episode that we shot together and getting, you know, to know each other and forming this group and then um, our final scene. We actually filmed our final scene, you know, on one of the last days of of the shoot where we, we all said um, our sort of, not farewells, but you know, see you later kind of thing. So um, yeah, those, those are very special moments. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Go ahead. Hello. Um, I wanted to first mention that um, the Book of Boba is likely the first um, like Star Wars media with indigenous representation as an indigenous story. And I was wondering, like, what kind of story would you want to see from, like, a minority within our world portrayed on Star Wars? Yeah, I mean, Tim, I think, definitely had a massive influence you know, in, in having John and Dave explore the Tuscans and explore that, uh, yeah. you know, that storyline. Because Tuscans were always looked at as the savages, the bad guys, the, you know, the, the animals of the planet. And, and in, in essence, um, those images were shattered quite a bit by those stories. And in it, I mean, for me, I, I, I don't know. I think it would be interesting to see how they can incorporate a storyline, you know, because it takes place in a in a galaxy far, far away, right? So, how do they 
bring on Asian elements. I mean, and, and they have touched on it in costumes and things like that, the influences of the Asian culture. Um, I don't know, that, that's a very good question. I'll have to think about that one. That's a heavy one. You guys no. are asking really heavy no. questions today. Can we talk about ice cream? What's your favorite flavor, May? Coffee? <laughs> no, but thank you. All right, go ahead over here. Hi. Sorry, can you just speak, speak up a little louder? That's part of it were you and the cast, and I really miss them. So I was wondering if you've been in touch with them recently. Oh yeah, yeah. I was actually in London recently, and I got to see Ian, and I got to see Nick Blood and Jason O'Mara, um, and uh, and I keep in touch with uh, so many of them. And, and and I actually was recently at a wedding of um, my boss, Marissa Tancheron and Jed Wheaton. Um, uh, her, not, not their marriage, I'm sorry, they're already married, but Kevin, uh, who actually directed an episode of um, The Book of Boba Fett. Uh, I feel like a big auntie with Kevin. So yeah, we're, you know, we, we do keep in touch a lot. Thank you. Sure. All right, people.